Well, good afternoon. My name's Sam Strickland and I'm the principal at the Dustin School. Just to give you a very brief bit of context about my school, uh, my school is an all through school. So we start with pupils in early years and we go through to post 16 and we are just short of 1900 pupils and approximately 200 staff. So it's, it's a 2000 uh, plus strong establishment with every layer of accountability that you can imagine and every year group um, going. So that adds to kind of the complexity of our approach to remote learning whereby we've got to consider what we do from a primary perspective, but also a secondary perspective and indeed from a sixth form perspective. So I've tried to kind of layer this talk um, on three levels. One is to think about the concerns that we had as a school when we were putting together our entire approach to remote learning. Then the second element is to think about the principles underpinning the type of remote learning that we wanted to see for our school community. And then the third element of this, uh, this talk, which is quite a swift talk, um, is to consider really what we're, we're doing at the moment and we've been fortunate but unfortunate at the same time that we've had dislocation um, to our curriculum delivery since September because of the uh, the impact of self-isolation of bubbles of year groups of staff because of Covid so we've had I guess in many regards an opportunity to kind of te tease this out and practice this somewhat since September um, but that doesn't make the situation that we're in now any easier or indeed mean that I'm any more of an expert than anybody else really regarding um, the complexities of remote learning. But I'll start with the concerns um, that, that we discussed certainly as a senior team and with our staff and the first key one is the sustainability and making remote learning manageable for staff, for parents for pupils and I think there's a real danger especially with what I see kind of going on on, on Twitter at the moment with people um, sharing explicitly we're doing this 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 a lot of it sounds great and I'm sure a lot of it probably is but how sustainable is it to go at that you know breakneck speed that many of us are potentially going at and certainly the demands of some schools are to go you know a thousand miles an hour and I think we we need to think about how we pace ourselves with remote learning. Another concern and it's a concern that's obviously been shared by, by other um, schools, other leaders nationally is, is the accessibility. Um, devices being one element of course, uh, actually having a device in the house that you can, can get to but equally so is um, internet access, internet speed, uh, bandwidth speed, but also for our pupils having a, a safe space, having a space to work, having a quiet environment um, and indeed within that having support. And that's that's one I'll be very honest. We've not cracked as a school. We've we've made a lot of inroads on this front, but I, I don't think I can wholeheartedly say we've cracked this um, as a school or indeed nationally as well. Another concern is the live only trap. Um, there's been so much talk in and around live lessons, live learning, the teacher having to deliver live. And I think in many regards, this is something of uh, a red herring, as is this whole idea of engagement, that the pupils are actively there looking at you on the screen. Yes, there's a place for live lessons. Yes, there's a place for live learning. Of course there is. But I think we need to think about the, the balance of this very carefully. There are other ways in which the teaching uh, could, could be conveyed. Equally, when we talk about remote learning, there are other elements of remote learning that can actually um, happen and take place as well. Reading a book as one example, undertaking a project is another example. If it's sport for sake of argument, it, practicing in your back garden, um, a Maradona turn, I, I, I'm making this up but I'm not because that might be an element of your curriculum progression that you want pupils to be able to do. And that ties in with the whole idea of screen fatigue. How sustainable again is it for staff, for pupils, for children, 
to be sat in front of a screen staring at it for three, four, five hours a day. And if I kind of strip this down to early years, the first year group that makes up my school, their, their ability, age four, to be sat in front of a screen for three, four, five hours a day, I would argue is questionable. And the early years curriculum isn't really based around live online learning. It is learning through play. So quite how you do that through continual live lessons is, again, a challenge for the, for the, the profession. Another factor, if certainly as we go further through the school and higher up, is to ensure that the writing stamina of our pupils isn't lost. Um, this was a consideration of concern for us with, with GCSE and A-level exams this summer, and I appreciate we're still at the time of delivering this talk, waiting to see what actually happens with assessment this year. But if pupils are going to have to, are expected to write um, for a sustained period of time, ultimately, unless there's a drastic change, that is pen and paper. That is not typing on a screen unless, of course, there is a drastic change. I think also we really just need to define what we actually mean by remote learning. Is remote learning solely a pupil sat in front of a computer and, put crudely, being entertained by a teacher? And I think there's a real danger here because this creates and goes back to all the false proxies for learning that as a profession we've tried to refute over the last five to six years. And then another element for, for our school, and as is the case for all schools, is how you maintain that sustainability between having your face-to-face -face curriculum delivery in school for key worker and vulnerable pupils. And if we're very true and honest, the number of pupils in schools at the moment is certainly greater than lockdown one. And how do we maintain a, a quality remote learning curricular delivery to our pupils at the same time? That is a hugely difficult balancing act. So some principles that we put into, into place for, for our remote learning as a school, we wanted to make sure that our remote learning maintained our school values, our school principles, our school ethos. And with that, that no pupil is left behind. And I'll come to in a bit kind of what we're trying to do on that front for our most hard to reach, our most difficult um, to, to access pupils with regards to remote learning. We've also maintained that all of our pupils have the right to access the same powerful knowledge. And that falls into line with our curricular approach of teaching to the top. Equally within this, we want to ensure as best we can, which is a real challenge with remote learning, that pupils retain that the knowledge that they're being taught, that it forms part of their long term schema. Um, and equally with that, to think about the acquired knowledge that pupils might gather as well. Uh, you know, an activity that, that pupils could easily do while we are allowed to go and, and walk out in, in society still obviously we can go out for a walk, is, you know, I'm a, I'm a year nine geography pupil. Can I get a map of my town and navigate my way around my town? That's a very different type of learning to perhaps what we're taking remote learning to be. We also, um, with regards to the approach that we've taken, we wanted to adhere to our own internalized retrieval practice approaches we didn't want to lose sight of those and they're incredibly important again to ensuring that learning um, and the retention more importantly of knowledge is learned forms part of our long-term schema and that knowledge sticks and the most important thing that we've tried to maintain with our entire approach to remote learning since lockdown one actually is that our progression model based curriculum approach is maintained that we continue to deliver our curriculum that we're not trying to do something that is different uh, that something that is a bolt on that's a tag on that's something that's there just as a frill or to entertain pupils for the sake of engagement we want pupils to progress with our curriculum as has been mapped out by our teachers years and years ago because we've got a very clear progression model in place as a school. And I think as a profession, again, we, we should not lose sight of that. What is it that we're actually trying to achieve 
with the pupils while they're working remotely. And a final guiding principle for our school is that remote does not mean solely live teaching. Yes, there's a place. Yes, there is a time and a place for it. Of course there is. But to my mind, and it's a mantra I constantly chant, the teachers are the experts. My departments, my subject leads, my teachers as a whole are the experts in their fields. They know what they're doing. They've written their curriculums. They will determine how that curriculum is delivered remotely. So what have we what have we done? And hopefully this helps. Hopefully this reassures people. I doubt anything I'm going to say here is rocket science, um, but maybe it'll give you some ideas. So first and foremost, we we've instilled within the school a giant sense of teamwork. If you try and do this solely on your own, uh, so for sake of argument, everybody has to deliver continual live lessons every single lesson of the day and you're on your own, you're just going to deliver your normal four or five back to back lessons day in, day out. You're very quickly going to become a silo. And actually, this becomes a really daunting task. So for sake of argument, I've got a department of 10 um, and we're in the secondary phase of the school and we teach year seven to 11. What, what we've asked departments to do, and we've worked really hard with, with our departments to do this, is to work as duos overseeing a year group. So my, my 10 staff in my department are going to go into five teams of two. Each duo is going to oversee the creation of the remote learning that will then be delivered through Microsoft Teams and any other um, manner in which we choose to give the, that work to our pupils. But Teams has been the main format that we've used and class teachers then your normal class teacher is then able to be online for um, the lesson to deal with any concerns or issues that you might have what we've asked departments to do as a minimal expectation while we're in this lockdown window is to produce a 20 to 30 minute pre-recorded lesson and our lessons are an hour long we've not asked them to produce an hour long lesson uh, pre-recorded there there need to be natural gaps natural breaks within any one given lesson and we've modeled examples of lessons uh, as to how this could work where for sake of argument I'm going to uh, give the context of the lesson uh, engage pupils perhaps with a, a retrieval practice starter and that can be pre-recorded it doesn't have to be delivered live as in live live um, you then might explain um, an element of, of the knowledge that you're trying to convey or scaffold a problem uh, depending on the subject of course and then you're going to ask the pupils to then engage in an activity and you can quite simply say to pupils now hit stop on this pre-recorded lesson you've now got 15 minutes to do whatever it is it might be half an hour for the sake of argument and the pupils go and engage with that and they then come back how do we then check that they're doing that well, that's where we need to think about the submission of work from our pupils. We've then got th this element of not only do we have the remote factor taking place within the context of the school community, but we've also got the face to face delivery for pupils that are in school, those key worker and vulnerable pupils. So if I give you the primary phase approach, at, we have a two form entry. So there are two teachers um, for any given year group in our primary phase. One teacher is working in school with pupils face to face because of the number of vulnerable and key worker pupils we have in school on one week, while the other member of staff is delivering remotely from home. And then they alternate the following week. So it's just an example of what we're trying to do from a primary perspective. But again, the, the expectation there isn't that those lessons are always live. They are, they, our minimal expectation is they're pre-recorded. And it's very much up to staff whether they want to do a live lesson or not. We've left that as a choice. For some lessons, of course, that whilst there is that institutional expectation of, of pre-recorded lessons, not every lesson lends itself well to a pre-recorded lesson as well. Some lessons may simply need a written instruction that the pupils get on with and undertake. And I'm comfortable with that because, again, I take that view that my teachers are the experts here. In terms of our daily approach, the way in which our day works, if I give you the, um, 
the holistic kind of approach. We have um, tutors or class teachers checking in. I say class teachers because the primary phase, checking in with pupils at the start of the day um, as a, a welfare check, which is uh, orchestrated again via Teams and indeed via um, our school based emails. Um, pupils then watch a pre recorded uh, assembly. I think there's a danger here if you do a live one that it, yes, it's great, it's live, but if the IT fails on you, it's really going to fail on you. Um, and then our pupils go about their normal school day following their normal school timetable, which has got built within it a break and a lunch period. And we, we want our pupils to engage with those breaks and lunches. Um, and I would actively encourage pupils to go into their garden and do some exercise eat obviously eat there at what they would normally eat for break and normally eat for lunch as well but that's the general flow of of our school day and we're, which we're trying to mirror remotely at home but maintain that same delivery with our pupils that are in school as well from a an upper school perspective years 11 12 and 13 um, we were meant to be for this week, next week and the week after in a three week mock exam cycle with our pupils, uh, which is part of our overall institutional approach to getting our pupils ready for their real exams in the summer. Um, now, now we've elected to undertake um, live walking, talking mocks um, with our pupils. Some of those walking, talking mocks are pre-recorded at Walking Talking Box because some members of staff have felt that that's more appropriate, again, in terms of how they are delivered uh, to the pupils. But our pupils in those year groups are following their mock exam timetable and engaging with either a live or a pre-recorded Walking Talking Mock, breaking down the mock exam um, paper so that the pupils can understand how it, sh how it should have been answered but also how the knowledge that they've learned so far should be applied in an examination um, context. Now we feel that's really important uh, because that is a knowledge base they would otherwise perhaps not have uh, but equally we feel that it may well serve them well for what might be coming down the road with regards to how uh, their GCSE and A-level uh, results will be calculated for this summer. We then have marking assessment and feedback. And my, my only feeling here, without going into masses of detail, is to follow the normal cycle that you would have in place. Your normal assessment cycle, I think, should be adhered to what we're um, in this period of, of lockdown and remote learning. And I think your approach is to marking. Um, and feedback should be the same. So for the context of my own school, um, we engage in whole class feedback. So I would expect my staff to maintain that during lockdown. I wouldn't expect them to engage in extra additional marking to what they normally would do. And it's very easy to upload a whole class feedback sheet onto Teams and to talk that through with your class as part of a, um, a live or a pre-recorded lesson indeed. And it, assessments, exactly the same. You could have a two minute um, initial briefing at the start of a lesson where pupils are gonna engage in an assessment if it's a high stakes one. And we only, we only do a few of those throughout the academic year. We tend to engage more in low stakes quizzing um, and retrieval practice as opposed to high stakes assessments. But I don't see any reason why you shouldn't just maintain your normal approach here. And then the final element, um, yeah, and I appreciate this is kind of a whistle stop tour of what we've done, are the constant checks, the welfare checks. So from a primary phase perspective, um, the member of staff that's working from home um, will divvy up with um, people with TLR responsibilities and the leadership team in the primary phase welfare calls of the primary phase pupils so there's a weekly call that, uh, that takes place to make sure that those pupils are that the children sorry are okay and and to for parents to regale any concerns issues or worries that they have uh, and that's up and running and in place and then from a secondary phase perspective we've looked at um, key safeguarding concerns that we have uh, in terms of pupils and we're making regular phone calls to pupils that we've identified as concerns 
and that might be pupils on EHCPs, it might be pupils who um, a statement here is another example, even though they, you know, they're likely to be in school because of the key worker vulnerable list, we still want to make welfare calls to parents to make sure that everything's okay. Um, and indeed, with regards to those, those high, higher profile safeguarding concerns that we have to make those kind of welfare calls as well. And there's a, a real kind of tiering and structure to it. So remote learning is a very complex beast kind of to pull it all together and one that requires a lot of thought, a lot of consideration, and probably is one that we're going to have to continually review as we move forwards throughout the whole of this next lockdown window. And I wish everybody the best of luck with it.